Good morning. Welcome to St. Helena Catholic Church for the celebration of Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. It is a joy to worship with you today. In order to preserve the sacredness of this Eucharistic celebration, we ask that all phones be silenced and out of reverence, please refrain from chewing gum and texting during Mass. As Catholics, we fully participate in the celebration of the Eucharist when we receive Holy Communion. We are encouraged to receive Communion devoutly and frequently. In order to be properly prepared to receive Communion, Catholic participants should not be conscious of grave sin and should have fasted for one hour. A person who is conscious of grave sin is not to receive the body and blood of the Lord without prior sacramental confession. If you are not of our faith or outside the church, please come forward to receive a blessing. The readings for today are found in the Journey Songbooks on page 898C. Please stand. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, since the very beginning of Lent, even until now, you've been working hard and diligently preparing our hearts for penance and charitable works. Well, today we gather as a whole of Mother Church to begin the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. That's to say we're going we're to speak of his passion, his resurrection. It was for this that he came to this town, his own town of Jerusalem. With faith and devotion, we commemorate this day as he entered the city for our salvation. Lord, may we be made grace, along with you as partakers of the cross. May we share in the joys of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Six days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands, they carried palm branches, and with a loud voice cries out, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. O gates, lift high your heads. Grow higher, ancient doors. Let him enter the king of glory. Who is the king of glory? He, the Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come with your abundant mercy. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Lord Jesus, Lord. Jesus proceeded on in his journey to Jerusalem as he drew near to Bethpage, Bethany, to a place that you and I know as the Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples, go into the village opposite you. When you enter it, you see a colt tethered, which no one has ever sat. You untie it, bring it here. If anyone should ask, why are you untying it? You will answer. The master has need of it. So they went off and found everything as they were told. As they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying this colt? And they answered, The master has need of it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road. And now he's approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives. The whole of the multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud. With all the mighty deeds that they had seen, they proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, if they were to keep silent, the stones would cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brother and sister in Christ, if you'd raise your palms as we bless, as we go through. Lord, increase our faith on those who place our hope in you. Hear the prayers of those who call upon you. Let we today hold these branches high to hail Christ in his triumph. May we bear fruit for you, the good works to be accomplished, for you live and reign forever and ever.
The Lord be with you. Well, brothers and sisters, good morning. Man, and as always, welcome to Holy Mother Church. My brothers Christ, we celebrate the Feast of Palm Sunday. This is why the statues are covered. Because remember, back in the day, if we were with Christ, we were walking into Jerusalem, preparing for the Passover. There is no such thing, if you will, as the St. Helena, or St. Padre Pio, or St. Faustina, or the Little Flower, or St. Joseph with that moniker. In other words, with the title. Because the gates of heaven haven't been opened. Therefore, that, that part of it is in existence. So this is why they're covered. You and I know he's preparing for the Passover. This is why I want you and I to join and make sure you stay in the day. Do you understand where he's at in the world? My brother and sister in Christ, let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, you are the one and almighty living God. As an example of humility for the human race, you caused our Savior to take flesh. Submit the cross and grant it. Give us lessons and patience. Give us lessons to be understanding even in our suffering. Give us an understanding, Lord, what it means to merit through sacrifice to join you in your resurrection for salvation. May our palms reside in our home so that all may know that we are Catholic. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Men, please be seated. We have children's church. Lord, send me one child. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes. Very cool of you. Thank you. How are you? Good. What you doing, man? Oh, we got... Okay. Is this your T-Rex? Yes. Is that what this is? But you don't miss Rex. Okay. It, it's a dinosaur. We've, we've, we've gotten down to the... Thank you. Way cool. All right, hang on to him. All right, man, you ready to pray? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, come. Okie dokie. Man, you got that good Catholic gene. Man, it takes you ever to get you to the front of church, yeah. I know that, that's right. All right, y'all are good? Man, <laughs> wow. Okay, all right, you good? Let us, let us pray. Lord, watch over them and guide them. Give them peace in their hearts, their minds, and their souls. Touch him, Lord, said he come to know you and Holy Mother Church. And may your face and the mother forever be upon him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go. All right, we're going to go this way. Got it? It's going to be a minute. Okay. My brother and sister in Christ, if, imagine if you're Isaiah, you're trying to be a dedicated family man, and the truth of the matter is you have at least two sons that we know of, but your world is tumultuous, so you're kind of torn. You're trying to take care of your family, but you're also responsible some 700 years before the coming of Christ for proclaiming. Now remember who he is. He's the most quoted prophet in the New Testament. Somebody see him as, because he's kind of Moses-esque. And the reason he's that way is because he has 66 chapters. It's more than anyone else in Scripture. If you were to ask the boys, our apostles, man, who is it that you felt like somehow just seemed to know more than the rest? They said, man, it's Isaiah. They would even tell you, if I didn't know better, we'd swear Isaiah came and lived with us during the time of Christ, went back and proclaimed it. He's the one that says, man, they'll pluck his beard. They'll spit in his face. He'll turn his back. My brother in Christ, listen to what I'm telling you. If you were listening to Isaiah 600, 700 years before the coming of Christ, he would give you clues as to what to look for. Remember, God loves you so much. He loves you so much. He's going to honor your request. If you decide you do not want him in your life, he shall respect it. If he wants you in your life, he will respect it. If you stiff arm him, he will stay at an arm's distance. My brother in Christ, he loves you so much, he will not impact your free will. And so you are going to have to listen that Isaiah is telling you, tell your children and your great-grandchildren and your great-great-grandchildren, you need to make sure they know that at the end of the day, this is what you need to look for. Because if you don't, there's not a big sign coming out and saying, man, stick your hands in my, 
in your, my sides and your sides in my fingers. My brother in Christ, he's telling you, at the end of the day, you need, this is what you need to look for. My brother in Christ, the foretelling of the coming of Christ through Isaiah. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I may know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I give my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Well, friends in Christ, if you and I were only to hear the words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Even 2,000 years later, you and I would have probably come through attrition. We'd have come to know that, man, those are the words that Christ speaks on the cross. What you and I need to understand is, this is the exact same psalm that Isaiah would have sang. You think about it for a second. He's foretelling the coming of Christ. Remember, everything in the Old Testament has to be somewhat close, but not quite as good as the new. The new's always better. Elijah wore camel skin, ate locusts and wild honey, and talked of a Messiah. John the Baptist wears camel skin, eats locusts and wild honey, and baptizes Messiah. It's always better. So when, he, when Christ sings the responsorial psalm, it's just that much better. Why? Because Isaiah's singing it about someone to come. He's singing it because it's him. And if you listen to the quote, my brother in Christ, this is when God shows his humanity. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? To show you that he's truly human. But he's also going to tell you that they're going to they're going to break they're going to uh, take his garments they're going to strip him of his clothes you're going to see all his bones they're going to be nailed to the cross he is foretelling that psalm is the crucifixion of which isaiah would have told you about and if you and i would have been there we would have said oh my god this is the oh my god yeah this is the one my brother and sister christ the responsorial psalm of christ on the cross My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God. Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. Divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far from me. O oh my help, hasten to aid me.
I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My brother and sister in Christ, if I were to ask you this question, rhetorically, do people in hell bend a knee? I would hope and pray that your answer would be, well, probably not, Father, because if they had been, they wouldn't, if they had been bending in the knee, they wouldn't be there to begin with. So therefore, if you hadn't been bending the knee, you're not going to start doing it while you're in hell. Hell is the absence, if you want to know what the definition is, is the absence of good which means only evil and only hate prevails. You need to make sure you understand that. And the reason you need to understand it is because St. Paul's about to explain where purgatory is. Now, you're looking for an English word in a book written in Greek, very novel idea, probably infringes on insanity, but I digress. Paul's going to Philippi. Now, remember, he's doing this in the early 60s. He dies in 66. And he's going there because they're his favorite sons. That's where he's kindred to. I mean, it's northern Greece. It's, it's protected by Rome. Most of them are centurions. They're retired. And whenever he's in trouble, wherever he needs help, remember, they support him. He's still a tent maker at night. He's going there and he makes a statement that Christ goes from the highest of the highs to the lowest of the lows. And just so you know, right, in other words, uh, where he is baptized in the River Jordan is the lowest point in all the world. So he goes from the highest of the highs, literally, to the lowest of the lows. And he says he comes as a slave. But then he makes a remarkable statement that every knee must bend in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Well, you've been a knee because you're in heaven, because you're before the throne of God. You've been a knee on earth because you want to be in heaven before the throne of God. You just told me that nobody would bend a knee in hell because if you hadn't been, you wouldn't be there to begin with. Where's he talking about? He's talking about Heaven's Hospital. Paul is a Jew. Paul's trying to tell people, you need to prepare for your judgment because if we don't have him come on Palm Sunday in the, in the Holy Week, then we don't have a chance. Remember this. We survive because of God's grace, not because of, quote, good works, even though people seem to tag us with that. God gives us grace to have faith. And because of our faith, we do good works. And because of our good works, we have faith. We exist because of God's grace, but we have free will on whether to accept it. Paul is saying we're going to end up in one of three places. Unfortunately, the last one is where no knee will bend. My brother and sister in Christ, Heaven's Hospital from St. Paul to his favorite people, Philippi. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand.
became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every Lord be with you. A reading of the Passion according to St. Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly decided to eat the Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup gave thanks and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, in my blood which will be shed for you. And yet, behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me here at the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined, but woe to the man whom he has been betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, those in authority over them addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest and the leader of the servant. For who is greater than the one seated at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at the table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials. I confer a kingdom on you, just as my father has conferred one on me that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on the thrones, judging the twelve, the tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you, that your own faith may not fail. For once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny me three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent forth without a money bag or sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? No, nothing. They replied, he said to them, But not one has a money bag should take it, likewise his sack. And one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. Namely, he was counted among the wicked, and indeed what he has written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, Lord, look, there are two swords here. But he replied, It is not enough. Then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them, and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing to take this cup from me, still not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up. Pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front of was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike him with sword? 
And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I've been with you in the temple area. You do not seize me. But this is your hour, the time of the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one of them. But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word the Lord. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, And they reviled him in saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of the elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. If I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that, I am. Then they said, What further need have we for testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is deciding the evil which is teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes treated him contemptuously and mocked him, and after clothing him in resplendent grab, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests and the rulers and the people and said to them, You brought this man to me, accuse him of inciting a riot, a revolt rather, sorry. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charge you have brought him against him, nor did Herod. for." He sent him back to us, so no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and release him. But all together they shouted out, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas had been in prison for a rebellion that, he had taken, that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting. Crucify him! Crucify him! 
Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been in prison for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Syrian, who was coming in from the country, and after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves, for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, the breasts that never nursed. At that time people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills cover us. For if these things were done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, Say it, others. Let him save himself. He is the chosen one, Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God, for you are subject to the same condemnation? And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes, but this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Abraham's bosom. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he said this, he breathed his last. Please stand. The centurion who witnessed what had, what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfume oils. They rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Please be seated briefly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. My well, brothers and sisters in Christ, go back 2,000 years, and this is how things work in their day. Catechism 101, why we do what we do. My well, brothers and sisters in Christ, the way it works in their world is you go to Jerusalem three times a year. And one of them is for the Passover. You would go to Jerusalem. You probably would not bring your own lamb. You probably would pick one up there. Because if it has a blemish on it, then when you go to the temple and offer it at the rail, the priest may tell you that it has a blemish. Now you have to go yet buy another one. My brother in Christ, it will be over one million people in their city. When you go to get the lamb, you have to eat it within the city limits. You have to eat it fully clothed. Usually you eat it fully standing. Imagine one million people in our little city here. That's what it would be like. Christ is going in that prior week, right? He's getting ready for the upcoming Passover. Once the crucifixion starts, this is how it works in their world. They have many different crosses, at least a couple dozen different types. There are some that are in the form of a T, a towel. Some in the form of a little bit, looks like a, a, a T with a little bit on top, which is where they're going to put the I-N-R-I. Some of them are in the shape of an X. This is why I wear this one, this type of vestment. It's in the name of St. Andrew. The reason they like it in the X is because it's closer to the ground. Dogs have to eat too. You see, brother in Christ, sometimes they would be used as torches to light the way after you've been crucified. So they'd put them lower to the ground in maybe just a single pole. As a result of it, this is the way it works. The Jews cannot crucify you or cannot put you to death. Only Pilate has the final say. As a result, this is why they try to catch the good Lord with this lady caught in adultery. They want him to stone her, but he knows that there's a centurion who's going to step in and say this can't be. Once he is ruled by Pilate that he must be crucified, at the end of the day, the crown of thorns isn't for something they did for everybody. They were truly diabolical. The reason that you and I know the crown of thorns was important because you and I are Jews by descent. You see, we know about Abraham taking his son up the mountain and taking Isaac up there, and as a result of it, when he finally decides that he is not to kill him because of the angel, he asked his father, well, who's going to be the sacrifice? And he said, the good Lord will give us the lamb. And then they find the lamb with his head caught in thorns. That's why the good Lord wears thorns. My brother in Christ, they would be over, if you were in the city, they would have surrounded him with several hundred soldiers to get him through the city. There would be at least 90 around him personally. There would be one man holding the placard, proclaiming him and letting everybody know what the crimes were of the three men. So he would be the town crier. As a result of it, he would walk through, and then they would have the 90 soldiers around him. 90 soldiers. According to the saints, people like St. Elizabeth, uh, St. Mary of Agreda, St. Catherine Emmerich, they will tell you that he received over 1,000 insults. From the minute he got the cross, to the minute he says it is done, which is about, I don't know, about three to six hours, which means you would have received a negative comment every five seconds. Imagine what it would be for you if you received an email, text message, or someone cursed you every five seconds for the next three to six hours, but yet you don't sin. My brother and sister in Christ, they say he received over 6,000 wounds from the minute that he takes the cross oh, excuse me, including the, the, uh, the scourging, until it is done. 6,000 wounds. You and I prick our finger, that's all we talk about all day. We wake up with a headache, man, we're just moody and temperamental. 6,000 wounds. Do you know the crown of thorns alone had over 100 holes in his head? 20 were holes. Three of them will kill him whether they touch him or not. Do you know, they, according to the saints, they spit in his face over 100 times. I bet if I spit in your face, I know where I find you for the next 72 hours. Over in that direction. Yeah, exactly right. My brother and sister in Christ, that's not counting the eight inch nails that they put in his hands. That doesn't count the one that they believe was probably a little bigger, maybe 12 to 16, they put him in his feet. Do you know they didn't get it right and they had to back it out and do it again? Do you know according to the saints that that cross fell twice because they couldn't line it up right in the hole? My brother and sister in Christ, according to the saints, the only time Christ ever yells out 
is when they finally put the nail in his hand and the first time they hit the spike and it goes through his nail, he gets out his first scream. He hears his mother scream. He never says nothing ever again throughout the entire crucifixion. My brother and sister in Christ, man, at some point you and I need to say thank you for what he's done for you and I because we won't make it. There's not enough, enough carcasses or lambs or cows or bulls or sheep or turtle doves to make up for all the sins of the world. That's why he's got to come. We are offering an infinite God a finite carcass. It doesn't work after a while. There's just not enough animals. So what do you offer an infinite God? You offer him his infinite son. That's why we pray the Agnus Day, the Lamb of God. That's when they would have raised him. That's why you and I need to include the crucifixion in the Last Supper because he drinks the fourth cup on there when he says it is finished. This is why I say body of Christ and not body of Jesus. Christ is his divine name. Jesus is his human essence because we eat his glorified body. Do you understand that when he told Peter when the cock crows, that's the time frame between 3 and 6 in the morning. He's telling Peter roughly when that's going to happen. Do you know that Peter's denial gets exponentially bigger each time? First denial was, yeah, I know him. The next denial was it had to do with you were part of the 12. The next, 12, the next denial is, aren't you a Galilean? It's, it's get exponential. Do you know the saints say that he cried so much that he had creases in his cheek till the year 66 when he finally departed and was crucified upside down? Do you know that he, his wife was probably martyred on the same day? We believe her name is to be Porphyria, or at least the same week. The saints tell her that his last words to his wife would go with God. My brother and sister Christ, every one of the boys, every one of the apostles gave up their life. And for the next 400 years, until becoming worship was legal, everybody was a martyr. You would never do this in public. And if you did it, you did it under grave circumstances. My brother in Christ, therein lies the point. You and I need to be thankful that we're a part of the greatest faith in the world, Holy Mother Church, that this is his church. And there are not 40,000 truths in the world. There's only one. And regardless of what you may feel about the powers to be and the leadership, doesn't change the fact that he is the great I am. And you and I know the truth. And the truth of the matter is that you never apologize for being Catholic. For 1,600 years, you're either a Jew or you are Catholic. I don't want to hear the rhetoric. You're Christian. Every, if you believe Christ to be the Messiah, you're Christian. How do you worship him? Do you honestly believe that if you and I went to a synagogue in the time of Christ, from the little town of Bethlehem to the massive temple in Jerusalem to the Sea of Galilee, that depending on what synagogue I walked in, it would be, they'd be doing differently? Do you think one would be ramping the music up? Do you think one would be shooting confetti across the stage? Do you think another one would be having coffee and lattes? I'm telling you, they all worship the same way, and that's why we worship the way we do. And when he says, and you heard it today, there is a new covenant. And when he says, this is a new covenant, do this in sacrifice of me, anamesis. That is the start of Holy Mother Church. This is why we celebrate this day on Palm Sunday, to give him thanks for opening the doors, the gates to the kingdom of God. Remember, he doesn't ascend into heaven until 50 days later, Penta, 50, on Pentecost. So when he tells the good thief, this day you're with me in paradise, He's referring to the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Paradise, Abraham's bosom. My brother and sister in Christ, if there's ever a day outside of probably Easter Sunday that you should give thanks, it is this day. Amen? amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand. My brother and sister in Christ, as we always do, the 12 gave their lives. Even John was bold in oil before they put him on the island of Patmos. Pray with me our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, St. Peter, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, St. Andrew, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, James the Greater, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, St. John. He descended into hell and he rose from the dead on the third day, St. Thomas. He is seated and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, James the Lesser, from whence he shall come to judge the living and the dead, St. Philip. I believe in the Holy Ghost, St. Bartholomew, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, St. Matthew, the forgiveness of sins, St. Simon, the resurrection of the body, St. Thaddeus, and life everlasting, 
St. Matthias. My brother in Christ, as we always do, we bring forth our public petitions. Why? Because two or three are gathered in his name from the book of Deuteronomy and Numbers. For the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Pope Emeritus Benedict, our Bishop Michael, all our clergy and religious, and for the intentions of all of us present today, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all the holy souls in purgatory, heaven's hospital, we pray to the Lord. Lord for an end to abortion and all sins against the dignity of human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the suffering and death of Jesus Christ will strengthen the church in holiness and give her new growth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians everywhere will live this holy week with special reverence, self-giving, and devotion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many young people will respond to Christ's call to follow him in the consecrated life and in the priesthood, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those for whom this Mass is being offered, for the sick, and for those who have died, especially Jean, Wilson, Dees, Courtney, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our My friends in Christ, now for your intention, the one that generates that worry, try to stay in the day. Give us this day our daily bread. You know when the Jews prayed it, they called it epiolusis. Give us this day our super substantial bread. They actually believed it was blessed bread from the altar of God. As a matter of fact, the Jews would actually hold it up outside the temple as you went and got by and said, this is the face of God. If that's the face of God, then this is truly his body, blood, and soul, and divinity. It must be better because it's the New Testament. But for that intention that's in your heart, that gives you that worry and anxiety, I'm telling you, remember, he respects and loves your free will. Give it to him and don't take it back. Who better to intercede than the mother of all living as we pray? Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and to the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. My brother and sister in Christ, the second collection, as you always know, right? So you know where it goes? It's for the grounds here, right? It's just for the upkeep. Why? Because we have so many people to come. I wish you could be here during the week when three and four different groups come from all over, whether it's home of Thibodeau, whether it's from Houston, some have come from Alabama and Mississippi, just to see the grounds. I'm telling you, you feed more people than you know. Look, I, I know money's tight. I get it. I went to get up gas yesterday, and every time I get gas, I go to confession. It's almost like it goes hand in hand. <laughs> Amen? Amen.
Well, brothers and sisters, as always do, right? We are so thankful that someone brings the gifts forward. Remember my brother and sister in Christ with the five loaves and two fish. For Jewish people now that you and I are descendants of, those numbers are very significant. They just didn't throw those numbers out there. The five loaves represent the first five books, right? The books of the law, Genesis, Exodus, etc., right? That's why you need to know where the five comes from. The two comes from is that there's an Old Testament and now there will be a new, right? So it was very significant to the Jew that something was about to change. When you feed some 5,000 men, which would have been 10 or 12, 15,000 men, women, and children, man, those five loaves of bread, when they multiply and you end up with 12 wicker baskets full, the 12 tribes, a foretelling of the 12 apostles, everything is about a foretelling. Remember, brother in Christ, he's just not going to simply just do it just to show you and I. Sometimes I think if he didn't do any miracles, would we ever believe? Moreover, you need to understand this too. At the end of the day, when somebody says, how many people did Christ feed with some 10 or 15,000 people? Do you know he only feeds the 12? Go back and read it. He only feeds the 12. And then he steps back and says, now you go feed them. Why? Because I'm leaving in three years. They're going to have to come to you to get the bread of Christ. They're going to have to you to go to confession. Oh, but you do. Go back and read scripture. Hebrews 5, I'll choose priests among men for the forgiveness of sins. No one is taken upon themselves. I don't care how you count the pot. Leviticus 4, 5, and 6, you had to bring the priest your sacrifice. And here's the skinny. If you went to go to confession back in the day, <laughs> you had to do it publicly. Imagine doing that in a meet. Yeah, boy. Right? And based on the animal you brought, the bigger the animal, the bigger the sin. You show up with a bull, everybody knows it now. So my brothers in Christ, man, a special blessing like that of Elijah upon the family. It's a twofold blessing. It's more than just the peace in your heart, mind, and soul, but it's also to protect you from the evil one. And may your his face and that of the mother forever be upon you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we had the bread we offer, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. Become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this, this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Jesus Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we put the wine, water back in the wine because the sacrifice needs to be complete. Bread and water, uh, water and wine, excuse me, blood and water flew from his side, so we add the water back, as imperfect as it may be, because I am imperfect, and understandably so. At the end of the day, it must be complete. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Become for us our spiritual drink. Bless God brothers and sisters in Christ, in the book of Revelations, incense goes before the throne of God. So now I ask you to bless this so that your sacrifice may return to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I ask that my intentions go before me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me. Please stand so your petitions may rise as well. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from all of my sins, for my offense is always before me. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accepts the sacrifice of Praise and glory of His name. Please make sure you always dip your hands in the holy water. Yes, it is a recollection of our baptism, but it started in the Jewish roots of washing your hands and feet before you entered a home or a temple, which is why we do it yet again. Amen? Amen. Man, let us pray. Lord, through the passion of your only begotten Son, may our reconciliation be near at hand. Lord, we do not merit by our own deeds, but through your grace, so that we will have faith, and because of faith we do good works, and because of our good works people know we have faith. May we feel already the effects of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Lord, though innocent, you suffered willingly for our sinners, for us. We thank you. Accepted the unjust condemnation to save us the guilty. We thank you. For your death that washed away our sins. How can we not but say thank you? And for the resurrection that you purchased for our justification, we thank you. And so, Father, with all the angels and archangels, thrones and dominions and the powers and the host of heaven, we proclaim your glory without end as we acclaim. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when you see me call down the Holy Spirit with this symbol here, that's over 3,000 years old. They would call down the Holy Spirit. They would call down God to put the sins onto the goat for their sacrifice, what you and I call the scapegoat. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you're about to hear us walk through the, or, excuse me, the Last Supper, the Garden of Gethsemane, the crucifixion at Golgotha, the resurrection, and then ultimately the road to Emmaus where he's seen in the breaking of the bread. My brother and sister in Christ, the Last Supper was in the shape of a U, just like you were situated here. You and I would have seated on the outside. We would have leaned on our left hand and eaten only with our right. Our feet would have held off the back of the couch. This is why Mary Magdalene can still wash his feet at that other prior meeting. My brother and sister in Christ, you will hear me speak in third person. He takes the bread, he breaks it, he blesses it to remind you of the Last Supper. And then immediately he jumps in the first person to tell you that he's yet come again. When you hear the bells ring, the bells were in the hem of the garment of the priest. So even if you would have been outside and I genuflected before the tabernacle, you would know I was before God because the bells would ring. That's why the bells ring today. My brother and sister in Christ, welcome. Welcome to the Last Supper. You are indeed holy, O oh Lord, and all that you created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, you make all things holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to the setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered in your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy the gifts that are brought to you for consecration. so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this mystery. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving thanks, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. We raise the host and the chalice, for he was raised on the crucifixion of the cross. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith.
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial, the saving passion of your Son, his glorious resurrection, his ascension into heaven, we look forward to a second coming. We offer you in thanksgiving, thanksgiving for this holy and living sacrifice. In your words, Eucharistio, the Eucharist. Look, Lord, we look upon the oblation of Holy Mother Church, recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death you will to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by this body and blood may be filled with the Holy Spirit, become one body, one spirit in Christ. May we make an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain the inheritance of your elect, especially the most holy and blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, along with blessed Saint Joseph, your chaste spouse, the apostles, the martyrs, the saints, your namesake Helena, whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Lord, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity Holy Mother Church on earth, your servant, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, Emeritus Benedict, our clergy, but none more important than those who have gathered here on their own. Lord, listen to the prayers of the family before you. And then when you summon in your compassion, oh, merciful Father, all your children summoned throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters who have left this world pleasing to you. At the passing of this life, give kind admittance into your kingdom, for we hope to share forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom you bestowed all in the world that which is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. brothers in Christ and sisters, you heard in the gospel today warning his apostles of the upcoming evil. We are in the Garden of Gethsemane as we pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of Holy Mother Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance to your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. If you would please kneel as we face the tabernacle. We face the tabernacle because it is, without question, we should be on our kneels when he comes out. It would be like him walking into this room and you and I begin to talk with one another, ignoring. That's what the sign of peace does. This is why it's optional. This is why I prefer you to face the tabernacle when I go to pull him so that he may come out, that we are in the right position, i.e. on our knees. May, may the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to those who receive him. We now combine the body and the blood, which came from his side. We are at Golgotha, and you and I know that because he's now been fractured, if you will. The host is in the form of a crucifix. We pray the Agnes Day that we now have a new lamb that must be represented. Hence why he says, do this, do this, do this in sacrifice of me. The Agnes Day.
Please pray your act of contrition before you come forward. I will pray mine publicly. May the receiving of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ not bring me to judgment or condemnation, but in your love and mercy be protection for me and mind and body in a healing remedy. The host is put back together to show that he is now complete. We raise him as in the resurrection. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. My friends in Christ, we now embark on the road to Emmaus. For you and I will now know it's been, he has been made known in the breaking of the bread. He does not disappear. He's in the bread. He is the bread of life. That's why he was born in a manger, manger to eat. The city of Bethlehem, which is now called the city of David, which translates to the city of bread. How else do you take the word made flesh? My flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. If I'm not in you and you are not in me, you not have eternal life. I'm the God who is, who was, and who is to come. You meant it as a metaphor? You meant it just hypothetical? You mean you weren't there, you're not coming, you're not going to be around at the end? My brother in Christ, his words are true. That's why we're so protective of it. More importantly, that's why people who do not worship in our capacity, and let's just be frank, why do Satan worshipers only attack the church? Why do they only want the communion out of the Catholic church? Because the others are irrelevant. This one is true. Who is the one person in Scripture, outside of Mary, that knew Jesus Christ was the Savior every time they met him? I know who you are. You're the son of the living God. What do you want of me? Throw me into the pigs. Lucifer. If you want to know how the Eucharist is true, just look at it from the other side. Amen? Amen. If you're not of our faith, outside the church, you miss Mass. St. Paul is right. If you eat of the Eucharist unworthily, you eat of your own demise. 30 years he's proclaiming this after Christ has come and gone. He's a Jew who believes that the blood of an animal will lead you to hell if you drink it. But yet he's telling you, you must partake of this. And if you do it wrongly, man, to your own demise, doesn't sound like a relic to me, come, please. If you're not of our faith outside the church, man, just put your hands over your heart. Just, can you give me a chance to pray for you? What have you lost? Please come, amen?
crown of thorns placed on his head. He knew that he would soon be dead. He said, did you forget me, Father, did you? They nailed him to a wooden cross. Soon all the world would feel the loss of Christ the King before his hallelujah. Hung his head, the grave had to die, then lifted his face up to the sky. Then I am coming home now, Father, to you. A reed which held his final sip was gently lifted to his lips. He drank his last and gave his soul.
please stand. And thank you, thank you, thank you for your reverence. Come, come. Lord, look upon the people who've gathered here. Lord, how can we do anything else but say, we thank you. Lord God, you are the one in the beginning. You're the Alpha and the Omega. Deliver us, Lord, from the wicked. Lord, and may we be submitted to the sacrifice for this agony of the cross, for that we may live and reign with you forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace. Now for your protection, right? The same one you would have heard at your baptism to remove any of those attachments, poor thoughts, uh, cursing, gossiping, slandering. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of his Holy Mother, I demand and command that any all evil curses, packs, spells, seals, hexes, vexes, triggers, trances, vows, demonic blessings, among those who have gathered from their loved ones, even to their possessions. Through the authority of Holy Mother Church, I bind you separately, I bind you individually. I break all seals, and they are bound, and the seals are broken. They are done so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pray that beautiful prayer, totus to us. Totally yours, Immaculate Conception, Mary, my mother. Live in me, act in me, speak in and through me. Think your thoughts in my mind and love through my heart. Give me your disposition and feelings. Teach and lead and guide me to your son, Jesus. Correct, enlighten, expand my thoughts and behavior. Possess my very soul. Take over my entire personality, my life, and replace it with yourself. Incline me to constant adoration. Pray in me and through me. And let me live in you and keep me in union with you always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brother and sister in Christ, as always, man, we're about to approach Holy Week. Run it all the way out. Right? I don't know what day you started counting your 40 days so you can get there and you stop on Holy Thursday? Or worse, oh, that's right, we got the crawfish ball on Good Friday. Woo, what a sacrifice. How do you handle the pressure? <laughs> My brother and sister in Christ, you got to run it all the way out, right? You go to the vigil, there you go. You go to Easter Sunday, there's your 40 days. Man, run it all the way out. If you can get this week to Holy Week, can I tell you, it's a great way to pray. My favorite Mass is on Thursday, the washing of the feet of the 12th. Man, I hope you can join us. If not, on Friday, join us, right, for the solemn blessing of the cross where we kiss the crucifix, but we also have the ways of the cross. And then we prepare for his coming on Easter Saturday, or the vigil, and then again on Easter Sunday. My brother in Christ, I will not be able to sit and visit with you right after Mass. I have yet another Mass to attend to, so I need to, I kind of need to make my way. So please know that as much as I'd like to do the, the blessings after Mass, right, the anointings, man, hang in there with me. We will have confession this week. So if you need to come to confession, man, what a great time to come. But when you come to confession, don't get all mad because the guy in front of you is taking too long. I mean, now you're committing a sin. Why are you waiting to tell me your sins? I mean, what are you doing, right? I mean, that's, everybody does their yearly pilgrimage, right? I get that. But remember that, right? There's only one of me here, right? Amen? Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. I mean, you have a great day.